In 2019, horrifying footage from Xinjiang, China stunned the world. It showed shackled and blindfolded Uyghur Muslims taken off a train and marched into detention centres, part of a broader campaign that's been called a genocide. The gods put a helmet on my shaved head. Each time I was electrocuted, my whole body would shake. In an effort to keep the Uyghurs under constant watch, China transformed the province into one of the most heavily surveilled parts of the world. Every Uyghur over 12 years old is forced to surrender their biometric data, including voice, blood, DNA samples and iris scans. Now, China's surveillance state is going global. Chinese-based companies have sold their sophisticated technologies to over 80 countries. These systems make it easier for autocrats to spy on their populations. It's giving them an unprecedented level of control when it comes to the choices, communications, and private transactions that citizens are making. In Uganda, tech from Chinese companies like Huawei is allegedly used to spy on government opposition figures. I've been put under 24-hour surveillance. All our phones are hacked. And even in London, which is the third most surveilled city in the world, half of its councils use camera systems from companies linked to the abuse of Uyghurs. In the UK, there's an estimated four to six million CCTV cameras. More governments are moving towards the Chinese model of censorship and automated surveillance. China is a, a prototype of what the 21st century digital authoritarianism is. An unregulated global industry of spyware is providing cheap spying tools to dictators. Spyware from Israel's NSO group was used to hack and monitor the family of murdered Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. As the Winter Olympics kick off in Beijing, visiting foreign athletes have been warned not to speak out. In November, tennis star Peng Shui disappeared for weeks after she accused a Chinese official of sexual assault. When she reappeared, she denied the claim. I have never spoken or written about anyone sexually assaulting me. I mean, China is an example of the future in the democratic world if we don't constrain surveillance technologies now. So how are surveillance technologies exported from China being used to spread repression around the world? In these centers, what they are doing is exactly what we read in George Orwell's novel 1984. And as spyware and the surveillance state goes global, can we trust those who are watching us from behind the camera? The region of Xinjiang has long been a pressure point where China's ethnic tensions had played out. The government has repressed the Uyghurs at an unprecedented level, holding many in mass-scale detention centers. Witness accounts, satellite imagery, and Communist Party documents reveal what appears to be the largest imprisonment of people on the basis of religion since the Holocaust. The region has become the testing ground for the next generation of surveillance tools. An immense network of security cameras, some equipped with facial recognition, is constantly monitoring the streets. You almost have what some have described as a laboratory of digital surveillance where these AI companies have tested what is possible when it comes to collecting all manner of information and then using those uh, for fairly chilling and insidious security purposes. And it's not just Xinjiang. Many of these technologies are being deployed across the country. From smart cities that use AI to contact the police when it detects wanted criminals, to a social credit system that ranks you. Everywhere she goes, Ouyang Haoyu is followed. What she buys, how she behaves, is tracked and scored to show how responsible and trustworthy she is. When the Chinese citizen does something or doesn't do something, this kind of system will rate them, will incentivize them, or punish them. It provides a futuristic model for controlling its 1.4 billion population. When you put them together, they enable not just individual surveillance, but surveillance that is practically total, enabling the government to have insight into the entirety of a community's life. Now, China's digital authoritarianism is spreading beyond its borders. In the past two decades, Chinese companies like Huawei and Hikvision have sold camera surveillance systems to dozens of countries, many of which have poor human rights records. They all have something in common. They govern like autocrats. 
These leaders are rising in an age where technology can make their lives much easier. China is, is not the only country whose companies are selling this technology. But what we do find is that in certain countries, Chinese companies have been very aggressive in terms of trying to introduce authorities to facial recognition, to building surveillance networks that can enhance the ability of security services to watch citizens. Some countries are offered Chinese loans to pay for these systems. It also secures a diplomatic relationship. And the surveillance you know, cameras and go with that kind of technical infrastructure power, creating a certain dependency in those societies that Chinese government can further exert influence, and including uh, making them in debt. While there are legitimate reasons for surveillance, the fear is that they will be used to monitor and repress dissent. The problem is that once governments get access to the tools of surveillance, they can use them often to surveil journalists or activists or those simply who are criticizing government. That can you know, very easily constitute a form of, of a human rights violation. In Zambia and Uganda, Huawei technicians have allegedly used cell phone data to help governments spy on political opponents. Uh, typing communication is done by uh, government security agencies and they work hand in hand in the uh, way. Huawei rejects the claims, but many still have questions. You're giving enhanced tools to those regimes and their security services, and so the natural question or result could be an even greater propensity for abuse against their citizens. There's a fear that China is not just spreading its technology, but its methods. The idea that a set of values like this uh, are making their way and, and are diffusing to other markets, I think should be concerning for those who care about human rights uh, around the world. And it's not just dictatorships. Western countries are utilizing these tools too. Numerous cities like London still employ surveillance systems from Chinese companies Hike Vision and Dahua that are linked to the abuse of Uyghurs. Those surveillance tools that are widely used in Western world were created by the Chinese companies. They were tested on my people and my people suffered for it. Some governments such as the US and UK have placed major restrictions on Huawei and ZTE technology concern that they may assist Beijing with intelligence gathering. The best way to secure our networks is for operators to stop using new affected Huawei equipment to build the UK's future 5G networks. Chinese-based companies are required by law to hand data over if requested by authorities. It's a total black box. You have no idea what's being collected, how it's being used, and what's going to be the outcome from it. Uh, and as a citizen in a country, particularly one where there is a, a question about the protection of human rights, this ought to raise alarm bells. In previous eras, spying relied on an army of secret state operatives. But today, a $12 billion shadow industry of tech firms sells spyware to dictators across the globe. On the 2nd of October 2018, Jamal Khashoggi, a Saudi journalist, walked into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul to pick up his marriage license. He would never be seen alive again. Khashoggi quickly comes under attack. He's dragged to another room and is killed within minutes. A squad of Saudi Arabian hitmen had killed and dismembered him. Spyware called Pegasus from Israeli-based company the NSO Group was found on the phones of Khashoggi's families and friends. Pegasus spyware allows the operators, the person using it, um, to extract information from your phone, to access the contents of your phone. The NSO Group claims it only sells its software to vetted government clients for security purposes. I can guarantee to you, our technology was not used on Jamal Khashoggi or his relatives. But leaked documents in the Pegasus papers prove how it has been used to spy on activists and journalists. It's an interesting and very powerful example of transnational oppression, how state actors are now reaching outside their borders to persecute and pursue um, individuals that they want to silence who are outside their jurisdiction. This is a global problem. French President Emmanuel Macron was on a list of potential Pegasus targets, according to a leaked database and the Rwandan government has used the spyware to target the family of activist Paul Rusisa Baguinha, known for his portrayal in the film Hotel Rwanda. There's this notion that 
privacy is like luxury right like but in countries in latin america in africa uh, in many places in the world being surveilled can also facilitate being murdered being kidnapped being exiled in prison this is a growing industry and the lack of transparency makes it nearly impossible to regulate there's no mechanism right now to really hold, for example, a state to account when they authorize the sale of this technology to another country. It's an industry that operates in in the shadows, and they're often providing their technologies to clients, to governments, to intelligence agencies, to public security agencies that themselves want to operate in the shadows. There's a lot of money in this, and so there's great incentive for companies to be in this space. There's no question about that. But it's dirty money. Several countries, including the United States and Canada, have declared a diplomatic boycott of Beijing's Winter Olympics. We cannot proceed that there's nothing, that there's nothing wrong with having the Olympics in a country that is engaged in genocide and perpetrating human rights abuses. Around the world, many are finally reckoning with these new tools of repression. There's way more transparency around arms, around the um, sale and transfer of weapons. I think we have a better sense of how dangerous weapon proliferation is, but less of a sense of how dangerous um, cyber weapon proliferation is. Many say a more unified approach is needed before it's too late. And so if we don't constrain these tools now, you know, we face a future in which governments can abuse them relatively easily in both authoritarian and democratic societies. My worst fear is that those violations of rights, those surveillance tools, will no longer bother the world anymore because it's built into their homes and they're used to it. 